2021 is going to be a good year. Not because it's all going to go perfectly, because, well, it might not. It will be a good year because God is good. And he gives us hope, hope that we can share. 2021 is the year for the church to spark a little hope here in Brantford. So, we have something for you. It's a sticker that says, Spark Hope Brantford. It's a way for us to spread hope together. Put the sticker on your car, on your house, or wherever, but just make sure people can see it. When they see it, they'll know there's hope, because you have it. And when they start to see it all over, they'll start to realize, hey, this is a hopeful place. And there's something else. This isn't just a sticker, it's a hashtag. So when you share things that give you hope on social media, hashtag Spark Hope Brantford. When a baby is born or your baby graduates, hashtag Spark Hope Brantford. When you finish chemo or the cast comes off, Spark Hope Brantford. <laughs> when you have a song stuck in your head, Spark Hope Brantford. When a Bible verse fills you with hope, hashtag Spark Hope Brantford. Hope works best when it's shared with others. So share that hope with the searchable hashtag, hashtag Spark Hope Brantford. So all of our friends and neighbors can hear about it. Together as one church, let's spark hope this year. It's going to be a good year. Well, good morning, happy Sunday, and welcome home to Pleasant Valley Church. My name is Terry, and I am so glad that you have chosen to worship with us here this morning. If this is one of your first times worshiping with us, an extra special welcome to you. I'm so glad that you are here. I'd love to connect with you and see if there's any way that I or we as a church can love and serve you. Maybe there's a prayer request that we can be praying about. Maybe there's another way that we can help. Simply give me a call or send me an email. In return, I would love to send you this free book called Stronger, How Hard Times Reveal God's Greatest Power. It's free for you. Just contact me here at the church office. Two things are really true about Pleasant Valley Church. We love God and we love people. So we talk about loving God, we call that worship. There's a number of different forms that worship takes. We are going to be worshiping God through our voices as we sing together in just a few moments. Another expression of worship is through our finances, where we give back to God a portion of the income that he's allowed us to earn this week. We call that our tithes and offerings, and you're invited to participate. Uh, there's a number of different ways that that can happen. You can text to give, text 8 four three two one and follow the links you can give online just follow the link off our website or you can arrange for a porch drop off or pickup whatever way you feel most comfortable with is fine with us we love God not only do we love God but we love people today is Super Bowl Sunday and yes there is a football game going on I've heard but we've claimed Super Bowl Sunday as the Sunday where we receive soup and this year macaroni and cheese uh, that we are going to be passing on to our partnering food bank agency. So much has already come in, but there's still time for you to participate in that. Um, I'm going to be taking our food bank items first thing on Tuesday morning to our food bank. And so you've got a little window. If you haven't contributed yet and would still like to, you can make that happen. It's a great way that we can love and serve our community, especially those in need. There's a number of other great things happening around Pleasant Valley Church. On Wednesday night, we have our all-church prayer rally. You're invited to jump in. It's online. It's at 7.30 on Zoom. This coming Thursday night, we have our Thursday night life group that is studying the book of Judges. You're invited to participate in that. And then this coming, not tonight, but next Sunday night, is our first, second, and third John uh, life group that meets online. Great opportunities to connect and to dig deep into God's word together. Well, let's pray as we start our service together. Heavenly Father, good morning. Thanks for a brand new day, a brand new day to be loved by you, and for us, a brand new day for us to love you back. Lord, that's our heart's desire here this morning. Receive our love, receive our worship. Meet with us as we meet with you. Change us and make us more like Jesus. We give you this service this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. 
worship team. Good morning, Pleasant Valley. We're so glad you're here this morning to worship with us. Why don't you stand in your homes and lift your voices as we sing to our everlasting God. hardest parts about following Jesus is the times of waiting. It's a little easier to feel like we're following Jesus when we are actively walking with him, following and doing things that he has called us to do. But in the times of waiting, when he's called us to just sit and be still and wait for his hand to move, it's really hard. And I know in this pandemic time, many of us feel like we are just sitting and waiting, waiting for things to change, waiting for God to move, waiting for that day that we can gather together again in person and worship. And so I want to bolster our hearts and remind us that as we wait, we need to rely on his word. God never changes. His word never changes. He is a good God. He is a true God. And he is still actively moving and working during our times of waiting. So why don't you sing with us and be encouraged as we sing this psalm. Uh, it comes from Psalm 130, and uh, this song is called I Will Wait For You.
Good morning, Pleasant Valley family. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this week that we had, Lord, for opportunities that uh, we had to reach people and to talk to people, Lord, and to just shine your light. Um, Lord, we thank you for the soup and the mac and cheese, Lord, the overwhelming response. Um, Lord, just we pray for this these items that um, they will touch people in the community and really help people. And we're so thankful for the opportunities for this uh, soup drive. Lord, we uh, we pray for, uh, we thank you for our prayer rally nights that we have, Lord. We have so many prayer requests that are, are um, lifted up to you. And Lord, we're so thankful that we can just um, unload and share them with you. And Lord, we're thank you, thankful for up uh, for prayer requests that have been answered. And Lord, I know there's a couple of yays for my family for a couple prayer requests that have been answered. And Lord, I'm so thankful for that we can rely on you to um, to take these requests and answer them as as you can, Lord. And we're thankful for that. Lord, we pray for uh, pray for this upcoming week that um, schools are going to open back up, Lord. Um, we're so thankful they need to, but Lord, we also want to pray for for health, for healthiness at the schools, and Lord, that um, that things will be okay. Just that we can just rely on you, and we're so thankful for that. Um, Lord, we pray for our government leaders um, with decisions that they have to be made, and um, at this time, Lord, they I think they made the right one of having to open up the schools. That's uh that's a yay. And so we just pray for safety and everything for that. Lord, we thank you for our church and our leadership in our church. And we just pray for upcoming things for us. And, and that, um, Lord, we're so, we're so thankful for what you can do for us and what we, how we can shine your light in our communities. Lord, we're so thankful for, for this day and for the days ahead. We're so, and we thank you in Jesus name. Amen. Take it away, Terry. Well, thanks, worship team. Since you have your Bibles with you this morning, can I invite you to open them up or turn them on to Luke chapter 14. Luke chapter 14, we've been going through a series here at Pleasant Valley Church called Following Jesus. We're kind of going chapter by chapter through the book of Luke and discovering what it means, what it looks like to follow Jesus. We've been learning about Jesus's kingdom and how it's different from the kingdom of this world. As you're turning in your Bibles, can I tell you a little story about my upbringing? We played board games as kids. There wasn't the internet, there wasn't video games at the time, and one of the games that we played was checkers. And my mom had a new twist on the game of checkers. We played it the regular way where, you know, you jump your pieces. Um, But my mom had a new twist on the game of checkers where the first person to lose wins. You know, so you would set yourself up to uh, to be jumped or triple jumped and you want to play so that you lose in order to win. Uh, that was kind of a, a different arrangement of, of checkers, but that principle really applies to what we're going to be talking about here today, about Jesus's upside down kingdom, where by losing, we actually win. We actually advance Jesus's kingdom by what the world considers loss. Jesus shows us his upside down kingdom. It has opposite values and priorities than this world has. It's a, it's a different gauge of success. And Jesus invites us to be a part of that kingdom. Jesus's true kingdom is opposite to the kingdom of this world. Follow along with me, Luke chapter 14, beginning at verse one. One Sabbath, when Jesus went to eat in the house of a prominent Pharisee, he was being carefully watched. There, in front of him, was a man suffering from dropsy. Well, Pastor Terry, what's dropsy? Um, The modern-day equivalent of dropsy is edema. It's where your, your tissues are filled with fluid and you look puffy. So here, this man with edema, this man with dropsy is in this prominent Pharisee's house, but they're using him as bait. Verse 3, Jesus asked the Pharisees and the experts in the law, 
is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath or not? But they remained silent. So, taking hold of the man, he healed him and sent him away. Then he asked them, If one of you has a son or an ox that falls into a well on the Sabbath day, will you not immediately pull him out? And they had nothing to say. So a few layers of understanding for us here this morning. The Pharisees were all about making a point, a point on the Sabbath. Jesus was all about making a difference. The Pharisees used the man with dropsy. Jesus healed the man. They focused on the rules. Jesus focused on the relationship. The true kingdom of Jesus is not about making a point. The true kingdom is all about making a difference. You know, the world tells us today, be right. Show others how right you are. Be first. Be the best. Look out for yourself. And Jesus shows us a different way. He shows love. And while we might not be able to heal someone, we are able to help others. Love is the decision to compassionately, righteously, and responsibly seek the well-being of others. For those of you in the uh, Sunday Night Life group, you would have heard that definition this past week. Love is the decision and action to compassionately, righteously, and responsibly seek the well-being of others. The world shows us one way to live. Jesus shows us the way of love. So here's the first point that we come to this morning. Jesus' upside-down kingdom makes love the priority. Jesus' upside-down kingdom makes love the priority. So by way of application for us this morning, where and to whom will you and I show love this week. Jesus' upside-down kingdom makes love the priority. Continue on to verse 7. When he noticed how the guests picked the places of honor at the table, he told them this parable. When someone invites you to a wedding feast, do not take the place of honor, for a person more distinguished than you may have been invited. If so, the host who invited both of you will come and say to you, Give this man your seat. Then, humiliated, you will, have, you will have to take the least important place. But when you are invited, take the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he will say to you, Friend, move up to a better place. Then you will be honored in the presence of all your fellow guests. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Weddings in Jesus' day were general admission seating, but the closer to the head table that you were, the more important you were deemed to be. The Pharisees were all about that. You know, if we're honest, we're not so different. We like and want to be honored, Jesus, in his kingdom, says, take the humble road toward the bottom, not the prideful road to the top. Position means nothing in Jesus' kingdom. Position of the heart means everything. Choose the road down. Here's the second truth that we come to in discovering Jesus' upside-down kingdom. Jesus' upside-down kingdom shows humility. Jesus' upside-down kingdom shows humility. Humility is not thinking less of yourself. Oh, what a worm I am. Humility is not thinking less of yourself, but it is thinking of yourself less. In other words, putting the needs of others first. Jesus' upside-down kingdom shows humility. It shows humility in both attitude and action. You know, these days we hear a lot of talk about rights. Think about Jesus for a second. Jesus is God. He had every right in the world. 
And yet, what did Jesus do with his rights? He laid them down. Even the right to life, he gave his life. I believe we are more, more and most like Jesus when we lay down our rights. Jesus' kingdom is all about humility. So by way of application, what do you and I need to do this week to have an attitude and action that shows humility? Maybe it's about not one-upping someone in their story. Maybe it's about listening more than we talk. Maybe it's about putting others first. Maybe it's about helping others feel important because they are where we can celebrate their successes, where we can weep with their pains. Can you imagine a relationship where the goal was to put the other person first, to not worry about our needs or our interests or, or what, what we value, but, but to, to build life into someone else? Can you imagine a relationship like that? Can you imagine a church where our sole purpose was to, to build up others and not concern ourselves with our rights? Can you imagine a city that was engaged in humbling ourselves and building others up? Can you imagine a country like that? You know, we have an opportunity to change the world that begins by changing ourselves, by having what Jesus showed us through his life and what he taught us in this passage, showing humility. Verse 12, Then Jesus said to his host, when you give a luncheon or dinner, do not invite your friends, your brothers, or relatives, or your rich neighbors. If you do, they may invite you back, and so you will be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed. Although they cannot repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. Here Jesus was kind of calling out the the host, the invitation to this to this meal that Jesus was invited to. The host was in it for what he could get, for who he could impress, or who he could repay. Jesus' true kingdom is just the opposite to that. It doesn't seek repayment, rather, it shows grace. Here's the third truth of Jesus' upside-down kingdom. Jesus' upside-down kingdom extends love in the form of hospitality. It's all about giving and not getting. I love what Jesus says here in verse 14, and you will be blessed. Blessing comes when we show grace, when we invite those who no one else does, those who cannot benefit ourselves. Jesus says there is a reward coming your way if you live a life like that. There's a reward coming in the life to come where you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. Can I just pause right here and let you know, church, how thankful and proud I am of you this morning? Over the past few weeks, we've been doing this Super Bowl challenge where we've been collecting soup and macaroni and cheese and although we today cannot invite people over for a banquet we are still sending that banquet to them we are expressing grace and love to them just as Jesus would have us do it's an expression of love to those who cannot love us back. Church, well done. So thankful for all of the items that have come in. You still have time to, uh, to drop off your items. Just contact me at the church office. Verse 15. When one of those at the table heard, uh, when one of those at the table with him heard this, he said to Jesus, Blessed is the man who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God. Jesus replied, a certain man was preparing a great banquet and invited many guests. At the time of the banquet, he sent his servant to tell those who had been invited, Come, for everything is now ready. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said, I have just bought a field, and I must go and see it. Please excuse me. Another said, 
I have just bought five yoke of oxen, and on, I'm on my way to try them out. Please excuse me. Another, still another said, I just got married, so I can't come. The servant came back and reported this to his master. Then the owner of the house became angry and ordered his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and alleys of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. Sir, the servant said, What you ordered has been done, but there is still room. Then the master told his servant, Go out to the roads and country lanes and make them come in, so that my house will be full. I tell you, not one of those men who were invited will get a taste of my banquet. What's Jesus saying here? It's the, the fourth point as we discover Jesus' upside-down kingdom. Jesus' upside-down kingdom loves and values those that the world pushes aside. Jesus' upside-down kingdom loves and values those that the world pushes aside. The broken, the sick, the weak. You know, think of the first message that came to announce Jesus' birth. Who did it come to? The politicians? The, the, the big people of the day? It came to lowly shepherds. That's Jesus' upside-down kingdom. And those, those who came up with an excuse against the kingdom, you know, they said, well, I've got, I've got a field, I've got oxen, I've got marriage. Today it could be, well, I've, I've got a job. I, I'm pretty comfortable where I'm at, or I've, I've got a family. Those who came up with an excuse against the kingdom will not be a part of the kingdom. Jesus said it in verse 24, none of those men who were invited will get a taste of, of my banquet. Jesus is telling us, don't presume. Don't presume that you'll get a second chance. Don't presume that you are in the kingdom just because you come up with excuses. You know, the, the hardest people to reach for the kingdom are those who are self-sufficient because they feel they have no need of God. In the upside-down kingdom, the more we admit our brokenness and need, the closer we get to the kingdom of God. Same is true in reverse. The more we deny our brokenness and need, the further away we get from the kingdom of God. Jesus' upside-down kingdom loves and values those that the world pushes aside. We're going to unpackage that more next week as we look at Luke chapter 15 and discover how much Jesus loves the lost. Verse 25 large crowds were traveling with Jesus and turning to them he said if anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother his wife and children his brothers and sisters yes even his own life he cannot be my disciple and anyone who does not carry his cross and follow me cannot be my disciple suppose one of you wants to build a tower will he not first sit down and estimate the cost to see if he has enough money to complete it. For if he lays the foundation and is not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule him, saying, This fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or suppose a king is about to go to war against another king. Will he not first sit down and consider whether he is able with 10,000 men to oppose the one coming against him with 20,000. If he is not able, he will send a delegation while the other is still a long way off and will ask for terms of peace. In the same way, any of you who does not give up everything he has cannot be my disciple. Salt is good, but if it loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is fit neither for the soil nor for the manure pile. It is thrown out. He who has ears, let him hear. Here's the, the fifth truth about Jesus' upside-down kingdom. In Jesus' upside-down kingdom, there is a cost. The cost is everything, but it's worth it. Jesus' upside-down kingdom has a cost to it. 
The cost is everything, but it's worth it. So, Pastor Terry, is Jesus here telling me to hate my mom? No. Jesus is using hyperbole. He's using an over-exaggeration to make a point. Jesus' point is that my love for him and for his kingdom, my love for Jesus needs to be my priority, so much so that everything else compared to it looks like hate. Where I love Jesus so much, I love the things that Jesus loves so much that anything else that compares to it, it looks like hate. Verse 33, Jesus said, In the same way, any of you who does not give up everything he has cannot be my disciple. Salvation is free, but following Jesus costs us everything, but it's worth it. See, Jesus plus nothing equals everything. Jesus plus nothing equals everything, but everything minus Jesus equals nothing. You can have the whole world, but if you don't have Jesus in your life, if Jesus is not your life, really, you've got nothing. Jesus here is saying there's there's no such thing as a part-time follower of his. There's no such thing as a partial follower. There's no such thing as a second-hand faith that we have. In Jesus' kingdom, it's all in. You know, I know as I'm talking and as you're listening this morning, I know, I know some of you right now have suffered because of your faith in Jesus. In following him, you've been misunderstood. You've been teased or mocked. You've been pushed aside by family or friends. Perhaps you didn't get the promotion or the invitation. To you, Jesus says, great will be your reward in heaven. And know that in the present, that God's grace is sufficient for you. See, following Jesus doesn't mean a trouble-free life. We must count the cost of becoming a follower of Jesus so that we will firmly hold on to our faith and so that we won't be tempted to turn back on it. You know, the reality is that, especially through tough times, Sometimes some of us who claim to be followers, well, we haven't been following Jesus to the extent that he asks us to. All in, everything. We come up with excuses. Well, I've got this or that. You know, Jesus isn't looking for our excuses. He's looking for a heart that is fully devoted to following him. Jesus' kingdom is upside down to what the world's values and priorities are. Jesus said his kingdom was not of this world. So our question this morning is, what kingdom are you a part of? Are you a part of the kingdom of this world? Or are you a part of Jesus' kingdom? Have you, have you invited Jesus to be the forgiver and leader of your life? And if you haven't, you can this morning. It begins by admitting by admitting that we are sinners, that we have rebelled against God by our attitudes, by our actions, by our words, by our thoughts, by our deeds, that we've pushed God aside, we've rebelled against him. It begins by admitting that we're sinners, that we can't save ourselves. There's no amount of, of good things that we could ever do that would outweigh the bad, the rebellion, the sin against God. We admit that we're sinners. Secondly, we believe. We believe that Jesus is God and that he paid the penalty for our sins as our substitute. The punishment that should have been ours for rebelling against God, Jesus took upon himself when he died on the cross, not because he was guilty, but because we were. We admit. We believe. Thirdly, we commit. We surrender our lives to Jesus. We make Jesus not only our forgiver, but our leader. We, with our lives, say, Jesus, however, wherever you want me to go, whatever you want me to do, Jesus, I will trust and obey you. Have you done that? 
Have you trusted Jesus as your forgiver and leader? If you haven't, perhaps pray a prayer something like this right where you're at this morning. Dear Jesus, this morning I realize and I admit that I'm a sinner, that I have lived my life in rebellion against you, that my sins have consequences, a separation from you. But Jesus, I believe who you are, that you are God, and that you died on the cross for my sins, and that you came back from the dead to show that payment was made in full. Jesus, I receive you now as my forgiver and as my leader. I commit my life to following you all the days of my life. Whatever you ask me to do, my answer in advance is yes. Jesus, I receive you as my forgiver and leader. In Jesus' name, amen. If you've prayed that prayer, welcome to the family of God. I've got some resources that I'd love to pass on to you that'll help you grow in your relationship with Jesus, in following Jesus. Simply contact me at the church office. You know, the reality of following Jesus is sometimes we come up with excuses for not obeying him, for not trusting him. If God's been speaking to you this morning about that, if if there's something going on in your heart and life where you know you've been acting in rebellion against God, take some time and, and do business. Get right with God. Turn from that action and turn and follow Jesus. Hope you can join us right after our last song this morning for our Zoom connection time. It's a great, it's our lobby time where we can check in on each other. It's also a lot of fun. Hope you can join us for that. Um, if you've forgotten or haven't been able to get um, your Super Bowl donations of soup or mac and cheese, um, contact me at the church office. I'm going to be taking them in to our partnering food bank agency first thing on Tuesday morning. So there's still a little window of time. There's still an opportunity uh, for you to love our community. Hope you can join us on Zoom. Um, if not, hope to see you next Sunday. Hey, just before we go, can I pray a prayer of blessing over you? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for, for your kingdom. Lord, it is totally opposite to the kingdom of this world. And Lord, by losing, we win. Lord, help us. Help us because we're, we're fighting against a, a world and a world system and our own selfishness that wants to put us first. But Jesus, that's not your way. Lord, help us to live that better way, your kingdom way through this week. Lord, thank you for this time together. Thank you for your great love for us. Lord, as we've received your love, help us now to share that love with others. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. As we pray all these things in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, church. Hope to see you at Zoom. If not, hope to see you next Sunday.